Hello all and welcome to another interesting video from Wealth Up. Entrepreneurs and business enthusiasts, pay attention because in this video we take you through how an ex-Tesla executive became Elon Musk's biggest rival. After PayPal was sold to eBay, the founders, including Elon Musk, became wealthy overnight and went on to fund companies ranging from Yelp, LinkedIn, Palantir, Affirm, and many others. Later, Musk and Fund themselves chairing the executive seats of multi-billion dollar Tesla company. But over the years, due to differences, many executives and Tesla workers have found themselves leaving the company to found their own electric vehicles company. Tesla can't do it on its own, argues Peter Rawlinson, Tesla's top engineer for the Model S, who left Tesla and is now the CEO of Lucid, an electric car company. Sterling Anderson, a co-founder of autonomous driving company Aurora, who left Tesla in 2016, says it's a fantastic community to be a part of. It makes me very happy to see how successful and influential a number of my old colleagues have become in various fields. Rawlinson, Anderson, and the other three ex-Tesla standouts are preparing to compete with Tesla's effort to electrify and automate the car sector while also helping it. Their companies are already worth more than $30 billion as a group. That's a drop in the bucket compared to Tesla's $780 billion market worth, but it's only the start. Here are the former Tesla executives who left the company to start their own and compete against the current EV giant. Sterling Anderson, Aurora Innovation, co-founder and chief, product officer. Anderson joined Tesla in 2013 to work on the Model X crossover and was crucial in the company's pursuit of self-driving technology by overseeing the development of the company's autopilot driver assist function. He compares his experience there to serving in the trenches together. In a high-pressure situation like that, you develop a true bond. Former Google self-driving car head Chris Urmson and Carnegie Mellon University AI researcher Drew Bagnell joined the MIT-trained scientists in confounding self-driving startup Aurora Innovation in 2016. Aurora has raised more than $1 billion and will purchase Uber's autonomous section in December 2020 increasing the likelihood that it will become a significant player in autonomous car technology. So far, it's arranged tech collaborations with Uber, Packard, and Toyota. Following the Uber takeover, the Silicon Valley startup's worth rose to an estimated $10 billion. Gene Berdachevsky Sila Nanotechnologies co-founder and CEO Berdachevsky was Tesla's seventh employee, recruited in 2004 as the company's primary battery engineer for the Roadster, the company's first consumer-oriented electric vehicle. He was more interested in discovering new methods to make the lithium-ion batteries he was working with a lot cheaper and more efficient by the time it was released. It was a decision to establish my own business or stay and work on the Model S project after the Roadster launch, says Berdachevsky, who departed in 2008 and founded Sila Nano in 2011. Since then, the battery company has created a silicon-based anode to replace the more expensive graphite. According to the company, the material may make Tesla and other EV makers' batteries at least 20% more efficient and perhaps boost performance by 50%. Sela Nano has received $930 million, including a $590 million round in January that increased the company's valuation to $3.3 billion and provided money for its first large-scale factory, which will open in 2024. It's been a long road, but I really enjoy doing this. Henrik Fisker Fisker Inc., co-founder and CEO Fisker, a well-known designer who previously designed a BMW Roadster for James Bond and directed Aston Martin's design studio, was a Model S design consultant. Musk didn't like his design and attempted, but failed, to sue him for breach of contract in 2008, alleging that the Danish entrepreneur used the contract to spy on Tesla, which Fisker denied. Fisker's initial effort as a Tesla rival, the plug-in hybrid Karma luxury car, was a flop owing to plenty of issues, including battery fires, assembly problems, and even a shipment of cars lost in a hurricane in 2012. In 2014, he closed down Fisker Automotive. Now he's back with a new company, Fisker Inc., which is about to begin selling electric ocean crossovers. The $37,500 battery-powered SUV will be manufactured in collaboration with Magna and will compete directly with Tesla's Model Y. Fisker, which went public in 2020 SPAC deal, is a year away from starting production, but has already a $4 billion market valuation and a $1 billion in cash for product development. A significant lesson learned in the early days was how to raise funding to begin an automobile business. The automotive business is not the sort of industry that Silicon Valley should or wants to invest in, Fisker adds, recalling the company's financial difficulties. Tesla was able to get out of it quite quickly. When Elon joined Tesla, he had a lot of money from PayPal, which helped. 
Then, in early 2010, he was able to go public. No, we weren't. Peter Rawlinson, Lucid Motors co-founder and CEO. Rawlinson, a Jaguar and Lotus veteran, joined Tesla in 2009. Initially, he and Musk got along like a house on fire. Rawlinson adds through Zoom, we both obsess about aiming for the heavens with technology and the engineering just can't be good enough. He was the principal engineer behind Tesla's Model S electric sedan, which redefined the capabilities of battery-powered vehicles in 2012. After considerable frustration with Musk over the Model X development program, he departed the same year to assist care for his sick mother. He's now the CEO of Lucid Motors, an electric car startup located in Newark, California that has received $1.3 billion in funding from Saudi Arabia. This spring, deliveries of the top-of-the-line luxury electric air cars, which can go more than 500 miles on a single charge and cost $169,000, will begin. Rawlinson adds, I'm not competing with Tesla's product. I'm competing with Mercedes-Benz. J.B. Straubel Redwood Materials founder and CEO Straubel, like Musk, is a Tesla co-founder and served as the company's chief technology officer from the company's inception until 2019. His early ambition was to build electric cars in order to reduce carbon emissions. With his business, Redwood Materials, he's now focusing on battery recycling to keep lithium, cobalt, and nickel in spent batteries from Teslas and other electric vehicles out of landfills and dumps. In September 2020, the Carson City, Nevada-based firm announced a $40 million fundraising round as it began collaborations with Panasonic and Amazon on recycling initiatives. To combat climate change, we must address the environmental effect of products, he stated at the time of the fundraiser. Straubel's net worth is estimated to be $1 billion by Forbes, provided he keeps a portion of his Tesla stock plus stock earned as a board member for QuantumScape, a battery company funded by Bill Gates. Only around 1.3% of all automobiles sold in the United States last year were battery-powered, and one firm, Tesla, accounted for over 90% of all sales. You guessed it right, Tesla. Electric vehicles will not succeed until a countrywide network of fast charging stations is built in parallel with the cars. Current EV business models are dead unless manufacturers like GM and VW who have bet their futures on them invest in or collaborate on a strong supercharger network. These are the findings of a comprehensive study of the industry conducted by management experts from the University of California, Davis, and Dartmouth College. According to the experts, big and traditional manufacturers have created interesting electric vehicles but have mostly ignored the charging station side of the issue. Meanwhile, Tesla tapped into both sides of the market by establishing a large enough network of high-speed charging stations before selling too many cars. In the United States, there are around 4,000 high-voltage superfast charging stations, the bulk of which are solely available to Tesla vehicles. Despite being the world's most valuable electric automaker, Tesla still needs to find out how to stay profitable, solve quality issues in its luxury cars, and transform attractive prototypes into mass-produced vehicles more rapidly. Clearly, based on the figures we're seeing, these cars aren't igniting the world, Car Brower, an independent auto expert said. It was a mistake to believe that just because these cars were available for purchase, people would buy them. The Chevrolet Bolt, which was released in 2016, has done somewhat better for General Motors. This year, the company has sold over 8,000 Bolts. Nissan Leaf sales has surpassed 3,000 units. Tesla is clearly operating at a separate level, as it does not break out sales by nation. According to cross-analysis sales of state statistics, 56,000 new Teslas have been registered in 23 states this year, including California, Florida, New York, and Texas. Tesla's 50-state sales total is expected to reach 70,000 units, according to analysts. In the first half of the year, the firm delivered roughly 180,000 cars worldwide. Of course, electric vehicles, including Teslas, account for only a small percentage of overall auto sales in the United States, which reached more than 17 million last year. In Europe, electric cars account for a larger share of the new car market, and Tesla confronts greater competition than in the United States, but not by much. Many Chinese electric car makers exist, but they typically produce lower-cost vehicles that do not directly compete with Tesla's products. Regardless of market, electric vehicles are the auto industry's fastest-growing sector. What do you guys think about the video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content and updates. Until next time.